Oldbury, in the traffic-choked heart of the industrial West Midlands. It's hard to imagine a less healthy location for a primary school. St Francis is on a small side street. People very often don't know that we're here. We're surrounded by um, well, the M5 motorway, numerous factories um, and buildings, and very, very little residential housing. People come from quite a way to St Francis. Um, so we are in a very deprived area. Yet this school can proudly boast and bang their drums for being one of the healthiest schools in the region. All this is all the more amazing when you consider that 10 years ago, St. Francis Xavier was in special measures and in big trouble. Very traumatic time for the school. I became head teacher in um, 1999 after the school had gone into special measures. Um, one of the things that bothered me most when I first became head teacher was the amount of time that I was spending um, with behaviour problems. The school sought a way out of its crisis by embracing the healthy schools agenda, just introduced by the local authority. And they began by transforming the lunch times. What we found was that the children were bored. They had no physical activity. They um, were getting into all sorts of trouble because they had nothing to do. And untrained people did not know how to deal with the children, how to cope with them. We first of all decided that we would employ a trained person, one of our support staff. The idea being that they're with the children all day, they know about teachers and the behaviours, the routines, everything that happens in the classroom, and that could follow through into the dinner hour so that the children would know exactly where they stood. I've been here 12 years and I've seen a mass difference, mass difference. I enjoy working with the children outside, it's great. You see the children mixing with all the other children in the playground, they get playtime in the morning, playtime in the afternoon where they mix with all the other children. At dinner time they stay in particular zones and they have all these toys like they've not had before. Great improvements. I think it calms them down and uh, it makes them better behaved. My job, behavioural management. Making sure that the children are all doing something hands-on all the time. I'm not a dinner lady. Not a dinner lady. We're not dinner ladies. We're learning support assistants. So we help out in the classroom and then come out into the playground and the dinner hall as well, which obviously gives you a lot more you know, authority than, than just being a dinner lady. So out with the old-fashioned dinner ladies and with them the old-fashioned fat-laden stodgy school dinners. The menu today is roast pork, roast potatoes, cabbage, cauliflower, broccoli and gravy. Or the other choice is cheese and egg with a crusty, crusty roll with coleslaw and a side salad. I don't think it's that difficult if you're, if you're consistent with it and if you give them a good choice as well. Instead of, you know, when it comes to the salad bar, we put a lot on and, you know, they do they eventually find the, something that they like, like cucumber or tomato, and they'll just stick with that. Of course, they still moan that they're, that they're not having enough chips and fish fingers, but, you know, as a treat, maybe once a month, we do put chips and that on for them. And presentation, like the jellies that we've done today, we put, you know, we put uh, yogurt on top of them and some fruit on top of them just to make them look a bit more interesting, but they're all sugar-free. Parents get involved too by helping to select the menu and by being encouraged to provide healthy lunch boxes. But what we haven't done is say, we do not, we will not allow, because that would be counterproductive. We really feel that it's by education and encouraging the children that we've made the steps forward. These are good for you because it's got vitamin C and apples are nice. Apples are nice and juicy, and the bananas are nice and ripe. What about chips and things like that? Not good for you, I don't have them. If you eat a lot of them, it can make you either sick or, 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 a, bit, or a bit 
little bit big and it's not very helpful, yeah, because it's got oily. This awareness of food at such an early age doesn't surprise the former paediatrician Sir Al Ainsley Green, who now speaks for Britain's 11 million children. I know from talking to even very young children, two to four year olds, uh, they know already uh, about uh, what is healthy uh, food stuff. I was in Newcastle last week meeting some extraordinary young children uh, who could talk with great authority on what was healthy, but the practice of what they eat is often very different. Uh, but I think the school is a really, really important uh, place uh, for children to learn the fundamentals and to practice the fundamentals of being healthy. Becoming a healthy school has had a massive impact across the whole of the curriculum. Children um, have ownership of it, children are involved, they, uh, they have a voice in the school. At our school, why do we think it's a good thing to sell fair trade products? Ria. To raise money for the Mavida School in India. Over half the pupils at St Francis are drawn from ethnic minority groups. And with this in mind, the school has forged a fair trade link with a village in India. As well as learning about fair trade and ethical purchasing, they're learning um, about profit and loss, about how to market things, about advertising. And they've obviously used their numeracy skills to work out um, how much they're gonna make, uh, they've took off the costs and so on. So really cross-curricular activity. The India Link has really helped the, to underline what, what we teach the children here about respect and tolerance and justice. The children have seen that we respect um, the, the staff and the children in India and that's had a big impact as well of the, the self-esteem and the confidence of our ethnic children. Promoting physical fitness has always been a key part of the healthy school ethos at St Francis. A coach from the nearby Aston Villa Football Club runs this after-school training session. But it's fancy footwork of a different kind that can be seen in the school hall. Each week, competitive dancers James and Francesca set aside their sequined outfits to teach ballroom dancing to year four helps with their fitness and it's very enjoyable. They really enjoy it every week. And obviously because they've been watching Strictly Come Dancing, they love it even more. Boys being with girls and obviously the first few weeks is a bit, you know, it's a bit, a bit unusual for them to be dancing so close to a girl. But now I think, you know, they, they learn to respect each other and Britain needs a good dancer, so you may as well start at the uh, grassroots level. Do you wish this sort of thing had been available when you were in school? Definitely, yeah. Um, yeah, I'd have loved, loved to do this when I was younger. We find that the more we do in school, the more the children want. We have a fantastic response from the children. So much so that when we sent letters out to which clubs the children wanted to join, um, the favourite club was not football or sport, it was the Conservation Club. Now, today we're going to plant our potatoes. But first of all, we've got to prepare our ground. The Conservation Group, or Green Team, cultivate a tiny patch of land beside the school, an oasis of calm just a few hundred yards from the motorway. The green team's all about cleaning the environment. We try and grow things for the kitchen um, and we try and keep everything clean and tidy around our school. We just try to recycle as much as we can and reduce and turn off the lights when we're not using them. It's just basically stuff like that. And there's more green stuff like that beyond the school gates with a project exploring the expansion of the Midland Metro, a tram service that doesn't quite reach Oldbury at the moment. OK, children, we're getting ready now to go up into the town centre to carry out our surveys. What is it we're trying to find out? What do we want to, to, to know? We're trying to find out if people think that um, 
that Arby should have a link with the Metro. Yeah, we're trying to find out what people think about public transport in particular, thinking about whether they want a Metro link in our, in our town centre. Being a healthy school is not just about food and fitness. For the children, getting out and about helps build a sense of pride in themselves and where they live. We are helping the the metro. The children really enjoy it. They're, they're a bit apprehensive to begin with, going up and introducing themselves to strangers, but they soon get the hang of it. And actually, really, it does them a lot of good, real confidence boost for them. Do you think the metro should be more posh and key inside? Never used it, so I don't know. <laughs> also, there's a positive contribution to the environment, coming out and meeting people in, in the local area, asking them questions, finding out what they think, and then reporting back on that. OK, then that's great, thank you. OK, okay thank well. you. Back at St Francis, one of the most popular after-school clubs is getting underway. When Jamie Oliver went into schools, we said, oh, actually, we're, we're doing that already, because we were discouraging the fast foods and the, the ready meals. We're trying to get them back to the basic, cook your own food and try it and see what you like, what's actually in the food. We've noticed from this, the lunch boxes at lunchtime are better. You can start Callum and pass it around. So we always say our rule is, that you don't have to eat it, but just try it. And they always say, oh, I don't like that. And we're not, not allowed to say we don't like it, because we just say, please try it. And they do. What's it like? 20 yams to eat. Children are gaining in confidence, really, about what they're eating, learning to be a little bit more adventurous, learning to try new things, and taking that into their homes. I do believe that the health of children should be everybody's business. It's not just a question of the school. Parents need to be involved, families, the whole community. But the proof of the pudding is in the eating, and Taylor takes her yoghurt surprise home to try it out on the family. Oh, wow. Thank you. That a big bit? I'm not. Mm. Really, really nice. Thank you. A lot of the news you hear today is about children being obese and that they're not eating the correct food. And if you learn them from an early age to eat healthily, then obviously they're going to become healthy adults. Is it nice? Mm hmm The most recent Ofsted report declared St Francis to be outstanding, citing one pupil who told them it's worth getting out of bed to come to school. They've come a long way since that devastating inspection which plunged them into special measures. When we look at the children here in this deprived area of Sandwell, and we look at how articulate and confident they are, how much, how much they can speak to you, to speak to other people about the Healthy Schools agenda, about the sustainable agenda, we feel very proud that that's been achieved by the staff in this school. Thank you.